The John Morris Show, episode 118. In this episode, the science behind creating an effective mobile app landing page. The John Morris Show, your life on code. Ladies and gentlemen, John Morris. Hey everybody, welcome back to the John Morris Show, johnmorrisonline.com. In this episode, we're gonna be going through another template. I do this periodically where I go through different templates that you might build as a freelancer and talk through how to some of the thinking for me that goes into these templates, maybe some of the mechanics of putting them together and some of the thinking that that, that goes behind it so that you can get a sense of what it is that, that clients and bosses and customers are really after uh, when it comes to the kind of things that you'll be producing for them. So in this one, I'm going to be doing a mobile app landing page. Now I had done a podcast episode on this a while back and had got a little bit of grief because I had just talked about it and hadn't really shown anything. And so I wanted to come back around and kind of shore that up a little bit and do an actual screencast here and and show you how to do this. All right. So when I think about a mobile app, um, mobile app landing page, there's a few things that in terms of how it's built and and making it work for your client that I think through. Now, the thing you have to understand is design isn't just design for design's sake, right? It's designed for a purpose. And really every page that you build, whether it's you're building a one-page website for somebody or it's you're building a website with multiple pages, each one of those pages has a purpose. And so when I think about design, I think about purpose-driven design. Now, some people call this function-driven design. I like the word purpose, but every single page that you create has a purpose and you need to know what that purpose is for your client and know how to be able to build a page that fulfills that purpose. That's why it's so important for you as a developer to have some idea of business and marketing and sales and so forth, because a lot of the clients you're going to be working with are going to be wanting those kinds of things. Now, again, you can specialize. You could specialize in doing projects for business. You could specialize in doing projects for, say, nonprofits, for movement-oriented websites. But no matter what you choose, those sorts of websites are going to have action that they're going to want people to take on those pages. So you need to get really, really good at understanding what your target market's ultimate purpose is, what the the reason for each page is, and being able to design those kinds of pages. Business, I would say, is one of the larger ones out there, so you're probably going to encounter this at some point. I say all that because when building a a mobile app landing page, it has a specific purpose, and that purpose is to get people to download the app. So your design should be entirely catered towards getting people to do that. And you should have some sense of how to build a page conceptually in a persuasive manner so that it'll get people to actually do that. Now, obviously, your client's going to need to source some of the information for you, but you still need some general principles in mind. And the more you know, the happier clients are going to be that they don't have to teach all this stuff to you. That said, there's some things that I look at when building a mobile app landing page in terms of making it persuasive. Now, these ideas aren't all mine. This is stuff that I've learned over the years that I've picked up, so uh, I don't want to claim 100% credit for this stuff. But again, these are just things that I want to share with you. So the first one is the headline. right? So the headline is really the ad for your ad, if that makes sense. If you view this page and its purpose to as being to get them to download the app. This is really an ad. This page is an ad. That's what it is. So the headline then is the ad for your ad. It's the thing that gets them to read this page. So it has to be incredibly engaging. And so what you want to try and do is you want to try and summarize the benefit of the app in as succinct and yet engaging and powerful and compelling way as possible. So again, depending on what the app does, that could be a number of different things here. I just said, learn this awesome thing, secure your future. So 
I'm just making stuff up here, but you really want to try and condense the essence of what this app is into the headline, not being cute, not trying to use fancy words, just really hitting people hard with this is why this app is something you have to have on your phone. Okay, so a, ki- a killer headline. The second thing is then the sub headlines. So if we scroll down through here, you're going to see this is a sub headline, this is a sub headline, this is a sub headline, and this is a sub headline. So you want these sub headlines, again, to themselves be engaging and compelling, but you also want them to have a sort of logical flow that they take people through, a persuasive flow. We'll get into what that flow should be here in a minute, but you want it to naturally flow towards a decision point of getting them to install the app. The third thing then is the pictures. Uh, any, I think anybody who, these days it's almost common knowledge that the icon that an app has, I mean, I'm, I'm this way, you're probably this way. When I look at an app, I judge it by its icon. You're not supposed to judge a book by its cover, but we do. And if, if an app has a, a jinky looking icon, I'm skeptical about installing it. I almost, it's almost like I don't even want the icon on my phone. And I think a lot of people feel that way now. So the, the imagery that you use here is important. So you want to make sure that the pictures now I'm not necessarily doing a good job of that here because I don't have an app that I'm actually building to to do this with. So I had to just make some stuff up. But you can see we do have a phone icon here. I took a picture from my Instagram here. So if I were selling, you know, if this were promoting Instagram, then I could maybe highlight some of the Instagram stuff in here. But you notice we have a background picture. We have this picture here. Down here we have another picture all designed to give them a look inside of the app. If you look at like the screenshots when you go to the Play Store for downloading apps, the better those look, the more like you likely you are to install the app. So make sure all the imagery on here is really, really good. It gives people insight to what's in the app. And hopefully the, the app that you're building the landing page for has is well designed and looks good itself because that's going to matter. Next is the explanation. So you have different points in here. We're explaining what this actually this app actually does. Again, it's a lot like the headline. You really want to hone in on the core of what makes this app different and better. It's a lot like selling your own services. Why why do I have to have this app on my phone? And the way that you're going to do that is with uh by relaying it to benefits. So you notice here I I start off with learn this awesome thing and then secure your future. If you look at that, that's really two distinct things that are important. So the way, the way I think about this is you have what's called the external problem and then the internal problem. So when someone is looking, say for an app for their phone or they're considering an app for their phone, they have the problem in their head that they vocalize. It's what they use to type into Google search you know, it's, it's what they talk about, but then below that they have the internal conversation of how they feel, you know, the, the concerns, the doubts, the insecurities, the fears, the anger, the sadness, whatever that's going on inside that they don't really talk about. And it's that internal stuff is what really motiv- motivates them, but they express it through this external thing. So for example, this could say, learn how to write PHP. That could be this top headline here, right? And then the bottom would be never have to work for a boss again, or it could be make a bunch of money, or it could be, you know, it could be secure your future as it is here. What is the internal conversation that's going on that's motivating them? This is stuff you're going to have to get from your clients, but the more you can inject that in here, the more this page will fulfill its purpose, right? So again, we want it to be benefit oriented. We want it to focus on the internal conversation and how the app helps people deal with that. Okay, so the more you can add that into your conversations and your or your explanations here of everything that you have and what you're highlighting here, the better. Then from there, uh, we want to have trustworthy testimonials. So these are testimonials that. You know, you don't want something that just sounds completely far pe- far-fetched. It may be an actual testimonial you got, but that doesn't really matter if people don't believe it. Uh, it doesn't matter 
how well it talks about your product. So it needs to be believable. You know, a lot of times what I like to do, you may have seen this on my own site, is use actual Twitter comments or if you can get Facebook comments or, or Facebook posts um, or video is even better. Uh, the more believable you can make the testimonials, the better. So uh, just try to get something that's as trustworthy as possible so people actually believe it. And it talks obviously good about the app. And then the fight, last piece is then your call to action. You always, and we do this several times here, right? So we ask them to download here, 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 and here. So four different places we're asking them to download the app. That Those are our call to actions, but you always want to end it here with an actual section that, that has a powerful call, call to action. It really is kind of a hard sell at the end of it. So start learning in seconds. What are you waiting for? Why wait another second? Get off your butt, yada, yada, yada. You can word that however you want, but you want to end it with a powerful call, call to action. All right, so those are the elements that I'm thinking through as I'm building this. And then when we get into flow, there's a principle called IATA, right? Which is a, it's it's kind of one of the foundational fundamentals when it comes to persuasion. And IATA stands for attention, interest, desire, and action. And so when we talk about attention, we're talking about this area right up here, primarily our headline, but it also has to do with our imagery here. All of it should be congruent and all of it could, should speak to what we talked about before, the essence of what problem this app helps solve. Right? What? How is it going to make my life better? So the imagery should speak to that. The, the headline should speak to that. This little text right here should speak to that, and and, and get people's attention and really grab them and try try to pull them in. From there, you want to try. You want to start to build interest. And interest is about really kind of hooking them in to reading the rest of the page. Like something's different about this. This isn't just another ad. This what is being set up here that got my attention it seems legit like this seems like it might be real and so a lot of times you can start to introduce the features of the actual app here uh, so in here we talk about video lessons so if someone this is oriented or kind of the way i wrote the text is oriented around uh kind of a training app that has lessons for learnings in this case how to be awesome but uh, so we're talking about the video lessons, 770 lessons that go step by step, right? So it, we're adding lessons all the time. These are things that are going to pique people's interest. 770 video lessons. Wow. That's a lot of lessons. And this app is free. What are right, you starting to build interest? The next step is then getting into desire. So with apps, product screenshots, the actual app screenshots go a long way towards that add-ons to the initial core offer. So the core offer is these lessons, right? And here we have the self-paced video courses. That's the core offer, but add-ons to that that are unexpected, like a supportive community, anywhere you go access, whatever else you could add on here. Those things help build the desire and raise the value. What you're trying to do is really raise the value of this product, this app, in people's minds above whatever it's going to cost. A lot of times these apps are going to be free, but they cost in terms of time. And then if I don't like it, I have to delete it. And right. So there is a still a cost, even if it's a free app, but if it's a paid app, then of course you have to raise it above that as well. Right. So then we continue on down into the desire. Desire has a lot to do with making it real. That's why testimonials, you know, that's why testimonials are powerful in doing that. And then we wind up with the call to action. So attention, interest, desire, and action. And so that's what this template here is all built around and designed to do. We got our little headline section that gets attention. We're slowly starting to build interest and desire by talking about what's in the actual app. What are some of the add-on benefits? Showing screenshots. I would probably show more screenshots than this maybe, uh, depending on what you have for the app from the person making it. Um, as many testimonials as you can have here. Obviously, you don't want to put a hundred here because then I have to scroll forever. But you know, six, ten, whatever makes sense in in terms of how you lay this out, and then ending with a powerful call to action. So, this is a very powerful template that you can then 
use for building mobile app landing pages. And really, you could take this, if you look at it, I mean, you can take this same kind of layout. You could add in different pictures. You'd have for different apps. You, Of course, if you were working doing this for different apps, you'd have different product screenshots. The text would be different. You could change up the colors to match the the text or the color scheme of the app that you're working with. Obviously, all this stuff would change based off what the app is. But you could use this same kind of flow and the same kind of layout for a number of different apps, app after app, app after app after app after app. And you could actually, <laughs> I mean, there's new app phone apps coming out all the time. And these phone apps need a web presence to get noticed. And so they're going to need these pages and they're going to, there's going to continue to be more apps and more apps and more apps coming out like this that are going to need these kind of pages. So you could kind of become the expert, the go-to person and not have a lot of work to do to really create this, to build these site sorts of pages. I mean, this doesn't take long at all, especially with what I'm using here, which is I'm using the Layers WP theme. So this is based off WordPress. I'm actually in the back end of WordPress and the customizer. I'm using the Layers WP theme at layerswp.com. And then this is a template that I built for it. So if we jump in here, you can see I've just added some widgets where I've added the information here. All of this is done, this whole layout is done through here. The only thing that I did was a little bit of custom CSS in here, but it's very, very little. Okay, it's just a few lines of CSS. Everything else is done via point and click. So if you want to change out, let's say the background image up here, you can just jump in and change out the image. You want to change the text. It would probably take you 10 or 15 minutes to change this. I mean, maybe a little bit more if you got to create some custom images, maybe an hour for you to change this. And what could you charge for this? 500, 1,000, maybe more, who knows, right? So it's very, very simple, and you can use this time and time and time again for working with clients. And this could become the thing that you do all the time. This could be how you make your living is building these kinds of pages. And it's really, really simple to do. I know that seems like maybe seems a little crazy, but I, I have experienced this myself. It wasn't with this exact thing, but it was with uh, after I built a site from Michael Hyatt, who's a New York Times bestselling author. I'd build a membership site for him. And a lot of people learned about that and wanted me to build them a similar site. And I actually ended up creating this service called a clone which was basically a clone of that site that I would build for other people. I'd change the logos and the colors and mess with the layout a little bit. And I would charge $3,000 for that. And it would take me maybe four to five hours for me to rebuild it because I already had all the code written. I had the, it was a WordPress theme. I'd already written it all. I had all the code. All I had to do was install it on their site, change out some colors and some pictures and stuff, and just kind of basically set it up. I really didn't have to rewrite any code. And people didn't care. I did that time after time after time. So the kind of thing is possible. Tools like this help you to do it very, very easily. All right, so that's some of the thinking that goes through my mind with this, with going through these and so forth. Now, I know a lot of people, they'll ask me, you know, where can I get, ac they just want this template. They're, where can I get access to this template? So I make these templates available that I go through available over on Patreon. For Patreon supporters, I have a freelance template level. and You can get access to this template. I have several others already in there. And I generally release at least one new one every month, sometimes multiple through throughout the month, but at least one new one every single month. And again, you can get that as a supporting listener over on Patreon at johnmorrisonline.com slash Patreon. Now, if you like this episode, be sure to like it so they know that you like this kind of content. If you know somebody who'd benefit from this and could use seeing this sort of setup and how to do this, and I'd appreciate it if you'd share it with them. And if you haven't yet, be sure to subscribe so that you never miss an episode. Thanks again for watching, and we'll talk to you next time.